slight different setup today you might have noticed two things have been bugging me one is that this pico explorer is called an explorer and it can't explore and the other thing is that we've got these motor controls and they've been slightly fascinating me so i've just got the explorer demo on the screen i'm just going to run it This is where the reset switch comes in good because it shuts it up. So you could hear that there's some motors in the bottom of this and I've obviously wired the motors up and you heard by the fact that they were making different noises that they were doing what this said here. The motors were going forward and the motors were going backwards. So just to uh, look at this little thing I made briefly, it's just a laser cut box with some holes in. It's got two micro switches at the side. They're all uh, wired into the GPIO ports and then the two cheap DC motors are there as well. For this, I'm not going to put wheels on because I don't want my Pico Explorer exploring because it will be a wretched little thing to try and film if that's the case. So let's have a look at the code that we've got here. Um, we can see this bit here sets the motor forward and backwards. Maybe it's a good idea just to comment those out at the moment. If I uh, stop that and run that again, hopefully I've not missed anything. All we can hear is this little piazza buzzer. So this is just the motor controls here. Let's stop that. If we just look at this, we can see how this is coded. Whether we're talking to motor one or motor two, well, motor zero or motor one, that's that first switch there. This last switch is whether the motor's on or off. And then this middle switch is whether it's going forwards or backwards. So naught for this is forwards and one is backwards. So that's how we're going to control our motors. Let's just set some flags up at the top of this. We'll leave most of this here really because uh, we're not having to squeeze every bit of memory out of this as possible. Um, but I'm going to say moving equals true and I'm going to say crashed equals false. So very similar to one of my other games that I've done. But now let's have a look at this moving bit. So here we could say if moving then let's let's run that let's tab it in a little bit hopefully nothing will have changed here um, apart from we i commented these out so if i run it uh, motors are doing what they were doing before and obviously if i change that to moving equals false that won't work so if moving what we're going to do so let's just grab some of this Again, we, we probably don't need to set this up for every single part of the loop it's going through. But again, as usual, I'm just hacking code here. We'll leave that test there and just change that to motors forward. And here I'll say motors all stop. If that flag is moving, it should send it forward. If that flag isn't moving, it should stop them. Now let's do that for both motors as well, because this is only doing one motor. The second motor, which is called motor one, and we want that to move as well in a forward direction. And to do stop, we have to do similar. We're not reversing here, so we can say it's just going in the standard direction. And this is a command to the second motor, and here they're both stopping. So what shall happen now? Well, we shouldn't get that noise. If we run this, we shouldn't get that forward and back noise, but we should just hear the motors going in one direction all the time now. Oh, nearly. All right, so motors are moving in one direction. So let's stop that. So if it's crashed, you want it to stop moving or something like that. So let's have a think about these these buffers on the front so they're two micro switches and i've connected those to the gpio so i've got one for each bumper so let's set these up after we've set up the display and set the crashed bumper left equals so gpi pin one i have to set it as an input pin so i do pin in and then I've got my switches connected from GPIO to 3.3 volts. To make this work as an input, I then have to pull it down. Now, I'm not going to explain why this works 
and about draining things to a ground and uh, pull up resistors and pull down resistors. Just the way that I've got this wired up, pull down works. So I have to do a similar thing for bumper right and that's going to be pin two and the rest of the setups the same. So that's given me a bumper left and a bumper right and from them I should be able to pull the value of those. So somewhere down here I've got to check a crash scenario. Let's do it after the moving. Go if bumper left value plus bumper right value is greater than naught. All right, so let's just explain that to check whether either of the bumpers have been hit. If they haven't been hit, either of them haven't been hit, it's going to be naught. It'll be one if either of them is hit. If both of them was hit, it would be two. Add those two values together. If any of them, if it comes to more than zero, then we've hit something. So if we've hit something, let's set, set crashed equals true and may as well set moving equals false. I think that's probably all we need to do. So let's uh, let's see whether that works. Oh, name and error pin isn't defined. All right, forgot the pin. So because I'm talking directly to the GPIO, I've just got to import machine and that's got pin in it. This isn't the best way of doing it. It'll just show you all I need from this is pin, really. So they'll just show you something else that you can do which will only import the bit of the machine module that we need. So I think we do import pin there. And then here we say from machine, right? So we're not importing all of the machine module here, just what we need. Let's see whether that works. Hopefully that will work now. Oh, pull down isn't defined. Hang on here. Pull down is in the pin class is in the pin class. So pin pull down and pin pull down. All right, so um, I just want to see whether this works now. Theoretically, if I crash, it should stop the motor. But it's it's not doing. It's not doing because I've just got another an issue down there. Attribute in object has no attribute exit. What on earth is that? 60. What have I done on, on line 60? Uh, bumper left value greater than if that all together bumper left bumper right value oh you see what i've done i've just missed out that there so let's try that again so it should be moving and it's instantly crashed why is it instantly crashed well my switch is there all right let's reset that let's try that again so the motor's moving and when i hit one of the bumpers the motor stops it sounds, if you can hear it, that the buzzer's going now. Maybe that's a good thing to do, to only make the buzzer work when you've crashed. Maybe that's something else you could do to uh, modify the code. Well, let's try it again with the other buffer as well. And if I crash that, the motor's stopped. So that's some rudimentary controls for my little, my Pico Explorer, what can explore. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that. We imported uh, the pin commands. We uh, wired these up. Uh, if anyone's interested in the wiring diagram, let me know. It's relatively simple, but we could just do this by connecting one motor. But maybe as a challenge, if you want to play with your Pico Explorer like this, maybe you could get a routine to work out what to do when you crashed. If, for instance, you crash this side, it's right that we stop the motor, but then what? Maybe we'd want to reverse a little bit. Maybe then we'd want to turn a little bit and then go forward again. Likewise, if we hit on the other side, if we bumped into something, if this was move, this was moving along here and bumped into that, we'd want to reverse a bit, turn a bit, move on. We click it again. So reverse a bit, turn a bit, move on. Maybe you could have a have a go at doing something like that. Think about how you change this code to give it something to uh, reverse and carry on when it crashed.